Uh, I welcome everybody to service this morning in the name of Jesus. It's a glorious morning and it's a wonderful family meeting we are having today. A wonderful meeting in the sense that God is speaking to, to us. The Bible said in Psalm the Bible said in Psalm 19, starting from verse number one, that the heavens declare his glory, and the firmament is handiwork. They declare his power. That handiwork means his power. <laughs> if somebody catch you what I'm talking about. Uh, verse number two, the Bible says, Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night utter what? Knowledge. <laughs> there is no language and there is no nation where their voice is not heard. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, there is something so much that God is doing at this season that we need to be supernaturally sensitive to. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, God is touching on situations concerning you this season that every devil we know that something has changed about your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So sensitivity, ladies and gentlemen, is the utmost for our manifestation in the coming year and in what God is doing at this season. Uh, in October, by the grace of God, God moved us into greater glory. Am I right? We had a greater glory conference. Come on, somebody shout amen. <laughs> and the greater glory conference was indeed glorious. Amen. Uh, by the grace of God, as we are marching into next year, the Lord spoke unto me. He said, today I wanted to charge my people in preparation for the year. Uh, so what we'll be doing, ladies and gentlemen, the next two weeks as we prepare for next year is what, uh, by the grace of God, God is laying the foundation of today. Am I talking to God's people, please? Now, I wanted to understand that the ministry of preparation is a necessity for manifestation. Where there is no preparation, ladies and gentlemen, the manifestation always comes out poor. Oh, yeah, they say proper preparation prevents poor performances. That is the five Ps. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That is the key to every excellent manifestation and excellent uh, demonstrations in life. So if a person is not in tune with the ministry of preparation, ladies and gentlemen, is head bound for failure. I must let you know, the ministry of preparation must of necessity preempt and most of necessity, ladies and gentlemen, be in place for there to be the glorious experiences that we want to see. Now, by the way, I title to today's message, Glorious Experience 2023. <laughs> glorious Experience 2023. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, for your glorious experiences to be in place, in 2023, which God has already assigned for you, as I said, the ministry of preparation must be given its place. The Bible says, for this is the voice of one that creates in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. So even for the Lord to be made manifest, there must be the ministry of preparation. Please understand, God told Moses, he said, tell these people, even to sanctify and consecrate themselves these, two, these three days, he said, this first day, second day, another third day, I will make myself manifest unto them. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? That is to say that this ministry is essentially, ladies and gentlemen, a demand of divinity for manifestation. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. I say it's essentially a demand of what? Of divinity for manifestation. For this is the voice of one that cries in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. <laughs> Everybody, ladies and gentlemen, must be prepared to see the way of God in manifestation in their lives. Everybody must be prepared. It is essentially a ministry of the Spirit that is taking you to the comfortable place of destiny, the comfortable place of divine design for your life. That year I see it as a year that will not just be a rumor, but a year of realities in your life. That year, ladies and gentlemen, your provisions will be in surplus. I said that here, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will look all around you and everything you will see will be glorious experiences. I am talking to somebody here, it's your year of divine encounters. I mean meetings and encounters with his power. You will see his glory. The handiwork of God will fill that year. Come on, lift up only and say, in the name of Jesus, I step into the year of glorious experiences. In the name of Jesus. Are you hearing what God is talking about? So what God is saying to everybody in the house this morning is that we are set for an encounter. 
and the Holy Ghost is the pivoter, is the leading force that is taking us into this great height. And that is why it's calling for preparation. The Bible says the horse is made ready for the day of battle. But victory what? Belongs to God. That is to say that you don't go to battle with an unprepared, ladies and gentlemen, untamed and uh, 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 untrained horse. If you try it, that horse is just going to take you straight into the mouth of the enemies. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? But when the horse is trained, oh, come on, when you pull the horse, the horse knows where to stop. When you move the horse this way, it knows how to move. When you move the other way, it knows that when you retrieve the uh, does, uh, horse, knows how to retreat. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, God is saying that I need your ministry, I need your preparation. I need this ministry well established in your life so that what I want to do, no devil can indict. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody here. I say no power of darkness can indict. I may have prophesy over seven people that are quick to say amen here. That between this mean time of preparation, the glory of God will redown even upon your life like never before. That everybody will see clearly that you have already stepped into 2023. You will never need to wait for that year before you see the glory I'm talking about. Oh, you are among the seven. I think the hymn once again should be louder. <laughs> is somebody catching what God is talking about? So the ministry of what? Of preparation. So this is very cardinal and this is very important as we move. So today, by the grace of God, he's teaching us on this. Now, glorious experiences. I wanted you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that everything that you see, ladies and gentlemen, is in demonstration of God's power. Everything is sustained by his power. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing that is working that you don't see the finger of God behind. If it is left for the devil, he wants everything destroyed. His mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John chapter 10 and verse number 10. But Jesus said, I have come that ye may have life and life more abundantly. That is to say the fullness of splendor is only by my possibility of presence and power operation in your life. Where this is removed, you might not be able to see it. <laughs> it takes my glory for anybody to see the power. Now, and I must let you know the glory of God which we have, we have learned is the, is the power of God, the splendor of God. <laughs> now, when the power of God begins to move, when the splendor of God begins to move, we call it glory. 2023 is a year that carries what I call a note of this glory from the beginning to the end. <laughs> oh man, oh man, I see you swimming in the pool of glory. <laughs> I see glory, the splendor of God all over your life. <laughs> I see the beauty of God all over your life. <laughs> The Bible says, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the works of our hands. Something about beauty, ladies and gentlemen, is attractiveness. When something is beautiful, you find it attractive. Am I right? Now the Bible said that let the beauty rest upon us. That means in no place shall you be rejected that year. That means by no means shall this will be your portion. I'm talking to somebody here. I'm talking to somebody here. I said that year, somebody is busting strong in the favor of God. Somebody is rejoicing mightily in the provisions of God. Somebody is riding high in the blessings of the Most High. Come and shout glory. Oh, shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? It's a year full of glorious experiences. You wake up in the morning, it's glorious. In the afternoon, it's glorious. Every night, it's glorious. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament is power, his handiworks. <laughs> day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night show it knowledge. There is no nation, there is no language, there is no land. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no continent. We are their voice, or voices are not heard. Now I want you to understand something, ladies and gentlemen. He said, the heavens declare. The glory of God. What's the glory he's talking about? The power. The family declares power. It's on the work. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And I wanted to understand something here. Number two started talking about time. Day. Night. <laughs> what is he talking about? The heavens declare the glory. Now, it is heavens. The family that you see here. When we talk about heaven, you're looking at the sky here. They are the one responsible, ladies and gentlemen, for the determination of day and night. Genesis chapter number one. The Lord put the, the, the big... Of course, um, the big great light to rule the day. And the smaller light to do what? To rule the night. And of course, he also made stars. Am I right? To determine times and seasons. Can you see it? 
So ladies and gentlemen, the firmament determines the season we experience on earth. Whether it is day, whether it is, whether it is a night. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now you need to have this on. Can you, can you project that in Genesis chapter 1 for me please? I think that should be around verses 14, 15, 16 or thereabout. Now, you see, you need to understand what I'm talking about. Everybody here, you know that the firmament, the, I mean, I mean, the, the heavens that you see, you know, whether the starry heavens where you see the sun, the moon, the stars, or the atmospheric, or whatever, they call it heavens. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said they declare the glory of God. So, what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> there is a glory for times and seasons. Every year, ladies and gentlemen, carries a certain designation of glory on his life. There is no season that rose in, ladies and gentlemen, without a declaration of glory on it. God himself said it to be. And it must be. Many may be crying that year. Your own experience will not be in tune. Many, ladies and gentlemen, may be having it as a reversal of order. I say, that time, that season of your life will be a declaration of glory. Lift up holy hands and glorious experiences. <laughs> is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So 2023 is meant to be a year of glorious experiences. Do you understand what I'm talking about? As determined, ladies and gentlemen, by the determinant set from heaven. <laughs> For that determinant itself declares that glory over every day and over every night. That's what the Bible says. They determine the time. They determine the season. The glory God has shed over 2023 will not be turned to shame in your life. For he that believes shall not see shame. Come on, tell somebody I've escaped shame. I hit five people high five. And me hit five people high five. Tell them I've escaped shame. 2023, my portion is not in shame. <laughs> Say it very loudly, very proudly. Let every devil be run, be mad. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, let every enemy, ladies and gentlemen, be crazy. Let them be sad. Let them be angry. Provoke them. Annoy them to the fullest. Declare it with boldness in your heart. 2023, I've escaped shame forever. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. I see people here that will never partake of the shame of 2023. It doesn't matter how wickedly the devil is doing 2023, your portion shall be in the goodness of God. I say your portion shall be in the goodness of God. Ah, for the voice of rejoicing shall be heard from the tabernacles of the righteous. I prophesy that every day in your house, in the name of Jesus, it shall be testimonies of God's kindness. It shall be testimonies of God's favor. It shall be testimonies of God's goodness. You are the one I'm talking about. Come and shout amen. Marito Sakata, the glory of 2023. Is your portion. However, I want to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, where there is glory, there must of necessity be a price paid for the glory to be experienced. I want you to understand this, ladies and gentlemen, that any glory you are experiencing that is coming to you free, somebody paid for it. But God is not interested in raising children unto children. Radha is interested in raising children. Ladies and gentlemen, unto maturity. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? God is not interested, ladies and gentlemen, in babies. Ladies and gentlemen, he's interested in sons. I mean, those who grow, who mature from babyhood unto sonship. Who have come to the fullness of age where they can take responsibility. What makes the difference between a baby and a son? is maturity and his responsibility. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. The hallmark of maturity is responsibility. If your mother is still feeding you at the age of 40, then there's a problem. Do you understand me? You may think you are grown up in stature. Ladies and gentlemen, mentally speaking, you are retarded. If you see a mother or a father that is still carrying a 50-year-old son on his lap, eh? then that son is a concern. You will agree with me, ladies and gentlemen, it's mean there's a problem somewhere. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Because responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, comes with maturity. When you mature, you take up responsibility. And the way you take it up makes a difference. A baby needs you to change the diapers. A baby needs you to take his bath. A baby needs you to feed him. A baby needs you to clothe him. He can't even go to work for his own clothes. Oh, yeah, anything you cry. Hey, hey. <laughs> but when he's a mature son, you tell him, go walk, buy your shoes yourself. Buy your cars yourself. Buy your houses yourself. Am I right? Because now he's mature to work. He's mature to make things happen. 
I prophesy in your life, a diligent sense of maturity is coming in right now. Amen. Which is to say, everybody under the sound of my voice, God is calling you into a terrain of responsibility. These two weeks is a week that is laying a demand of responsibility on the church. Let nobody be behind. If you want, ladies and gentlemen, to see the glory that God has shed over that season. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Responsibility is what makes the difference. The Bible said in Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 18. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 18. The Bible says you are can that the suffering of this present time. It's nothing to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed in us. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen, the glory that will be revealed in your life, the power display of God, the splendor of the Almighty that will be made manifest that year. The Bible said there must of necessity be the preceding suffering. Something that you are paying as a price before you can enter into that glory. Please understand, this is how God has set it to be. I mean, this is how God has said it to be. Now, the Bible says he showed unto the children of Israel his act and unto Moses his ways. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, God is not interested in just giving you, you know, manna and manna and manna every day. He's interested in souls who wants to know his ways. How do I make it happen? Papa, just don't give me food on the dining. I want, to, I want you to take me to the kitchen and show me how this thing can be prepared. I want you to give me the kitchen experience and show me how I can be responsible to make it happen anytime I want it to, 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 to happen for me. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? God is interested in raising such children. And I believe that everybody in, my, in the house today, ladies and gentlemen, they are not here all because they just want a pastor just prophesy. And let me just receive and let me just go. No. No. Everybody in the house today, ladies and gentlemen, we've been built all through the year. Pastor Tommy has labored so much, preaching the word. And by the grace of God, all other pastors, all of us, we've labored so much, bringing the word to us every day, every time, online, everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, so that we can rise into maturity. Come on, let's show some responsibility. Let's show what? Some responsibility. <laughs> this is what is important. The Bible says you are can't, you reckon that the suffering of this present time is nothing to be compared with the glory that is to, to be revealed in us. There must be, as I said, the necessity of a suffering. Something you deny yourself of. Something you are engaged in that is unpalatable to your flesh. That is, ladies and gentlemen, what you can call a little bit of some discomfort. A little bit of some dissatisfaction. But you know one thing? The Bible says the weight of that dissatisfaction is nothing to be compared with the weight and the gravity of the glory that you are paying for. Am I talking to somebody here? That is to say, if I must just do this work, if I must just take up this responsibility, if I must just, ladies and gentlemen, do this thing, the glory that will fall Follow, ah, yeah, 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 will be mightier, will be bigger. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something mightier in front of you, 2023, and God is saying these two weeks, just these two weeks, pay a price. Just these two weeks, do what? Pay a price. This is very important. Jesus himself did not go into glory without paying the price. The Bible said in Luke chapter number 24 and verse 26, Jesus speaking with the two men on the way to Emmaus. Luke 24 and verse 26. Jesus said, Hot not Christ to suffer before entering to his glory. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a glory for your life. There is a glory declared over the days and the nights of 2023. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, God is saying that there must be a price to be paid before entering into it. Before entering his glory, there is a glory for you. Please understand, I know the plans which I have towards you specific. Please never you generalize it. It's too big to be generalized. I know the plans which I have towards you, Akimbo Lago. I know the plans which I have towards you, Badi Geshe. I know the plans which I have towards you, Father. I know the plans which I have towards you, everybody. I know the plans I have on those families. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I see the names of every family in DGC registered on that list. I know the plans which I have towards you. The plans of good are not of what? Of evil. <laughs> to give you what? A future. And unexpected. Now, but God said, the next verse, he said, when you seek me, he said, you will find it. You will locate that plan. Only when you seek me with all what? All your heart. So there must be a seeking before the discovery and the, ladies and gentlemen, establishment of that plan. There must be a seeking. 
And that's why these two weeks we are said to see God. Hold not Christ to suffer. What's that suffering? Self-denial in seeking God before entering into his glory. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter number 2 and verse number 9. Hebrews chapter number 2 and verse number 9. The Bible says, but we see Jesus who was made lower than Elohim. <laughs> you know, your translation says lower than angels. It's okay. <laughs> He was made lower than, 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 than angels, or but than Elohim, than God. That's the meaning. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The, the what was there is Elohim. He was made lower than, you know, Elohim. Do you understand? Uh, now, he, he said, he said, he said, he was made lower than Elohim by the sufferings of death. Now crowned with glory and honor. Kabaya kataya kaba. Le prodigada that he through the grace of God. Leporatok Zeketia may taste it for every man. But we see Jesus, who was made what? Lower than Elohim. <laughs> he was made lower, ladies and gentlemen, and angels. And the same Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible said, by the suffering of death. So there is something he suffered. There's something he denied himself of, ladies and gentlemen, that he might qualify himself for the crown of glory. Please understand, if he would not deny himself, there is no qualification for that crown. Please let everybody know this. <laughs> for that crown of glory to rest on his life, the crown of honor, the Bible said he must deny, he must suffer something for that crown. <laughs> he comes with a price. Ladies and gentlemen, no free food in free town of Christianity. I don't know, Jesus did it all. No, yes, I know. But Jesus said also, Comes off out with me. Let's go through it together. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So he must go through it for him to experience it. That is the key thing. Who was made little lower for him to be able. So this is the time to go low. <laughs> this is the time to deprive ourselves also on television. Attention. Uh, but, but Pastor, just allow what cup to go today. After work, I'm very sure Pastor, I will, I will go low. But, but this one. Am I not on point? Eh? Why are you looking at me like, me like that? Have you not found in your heart that it is Argentina? <laughs> if what cock can just go faster, you know I will concentrate. Just this one, you know. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> if you look up, <laughs> I've seen the French uh, president dancing. If you look up, if you look up, <laughs> may God answer him. Ah, few are dead. I said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> that believe so much in uh, mercy. Am I right? You want mercy? Okay, let me just leave it there. <laughs> After today, we will talk. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. What was I saying before? Deny yourself. God bless you. Give me a handshake. God bless you. You will give me $100. Killing was on home. <laughs> right. You give me 100 and I'll give you 200. Are you okay with that one? Yeah, I shake it again. <laughs> so I will cancel your whole address. So it's me that will give you 100. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. So what was I saying before, please? So deny yourself. Am I right? There must be a season of life, ladies and gentlemen, that we consecrate ourselves and we take up seriousness. Jesus had to go through it for him to qualify for glory. The Bible made us to understand in 2 Peter chapter number 1 and verse 11. 2 Peter chapter number 1, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 11, the Bible says, uh, searching what? <laughs> the Bible says, they are searching. <laughs> Man bro take What's the spirit of Christ in them signified? Testifying of uh, 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 the coming of Christ, I, I, I mean, of, uh, testifying beforehand the suffering of Christ and the glory that must follow. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? What the spirit of Christ in them signified, testifying of, testifying ahead, testifying beforehand, the sufferings of Christ and the glory that must follow. That is to say, of necessity, there must be a suffering before an experience of glory. If that year is a glorious year, ladies and gentlemen, some price needs to be paid. 
You see, we shouldn't just be looking at the glory aspect. Everybody wants the glory without the story. Everybody wants the glory, ladies and gentlemen, without the price. No, ladies and gentlemen, if you truly want to see the price, so that we will not just be in the hype of, hey, yeah, pastor said it, I jumped, I, yeah, yeah, pastor preached it, man spoke on. <laughs> and at the end of the year, nothing has changed. No, ladies and gentlemen, when you pay the price, you know something will happen. I said, when you go deep, you know you will find waters. I don't know who I'm talking to here. This time around, you will find substance. Amen. I said, this time around, as you dig deep, you will find God. Amen. Come on, lift up and say, I locate God this time. In the name of Jesus. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? I'm doing my best to slow down a little bit so that we can all understand this message. I don't want to go on the hype. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So that we can all understand and we can all grab it. Because it is something that places the necessity of responsibility on each and every one of us. So Jesus, the Bible said he had to go through this suffering before he can enter into the what? Into the glory. And that is what God is saying about you and I. There is no exemption, ladies and gentlemen. Christianity is all about sharing responsibility with God. It's not about just placing everything on God. No. I have told you severally. Any religion or any Christianity or any faith that tries to put the total responsibility of performance on God is an irresponsible faith. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Real faith moves with God so that things can happen. I said real faith moves with God so that things can happen. Uh, God, Baba, I believe, the Bible says you are blessed me with all. Yes, I receive, I believe, that's all. And you do nothing. You're not going to see anything. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? There are things placed on you to do that will move his power into action. That's why the Bible says faith without action. That action is your own responsibility. Without a corresponding responsibility on your part in demonstration. No, nothing happens. I was praying, Lord, change the chairs in my house. Change the chairs. Chairs. Change. Chair. Change. 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 After two weeks, still praying. You know what God said? I went to the parlor. I looked at the chair. Chair. Change. Baba. The KT. Chair. The voice of the Lord just came unto me. He said, let me show you mercy. You this ignorant man. He said, nothing will change. Even if you pray till Jesus comes. He said, because you know what to do. And you refuse to do it. I said, Baba, am I will or wrong? I understand the rest of this of the statement. What God is saying is faith without action is what? Is dead. I said, Pastor, so tomorrow we are going to buy chair. And we began to move. And we went and we priced. And uh, 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 this one, my pastor said, uh, since you don't have money, let's buy this one for 200,000. I said, no. Whether the one for a million and the one for 200,000, whichever one, I don't have the money. 200,000, I don't have. This million, I don't have. I said, let me go, come and go for this. Whatever is on the way of faith is what faith clears. I said, so let me go for this one. And then as we were walking out, I said, Pastor, you know I don't have this money. I said, but I show you how faith works. And then we told them, he said, by, that was a Saturday. I said, by Monday, I'm coming to, to pay. Saturday, somebody called me. You gave me this prophecy, came to pass, said yes. And this thing has come to pass since the man never called. He just remembered me on Sunday. And he said, uh, I have this money for you, and this and this and that. Ladies and gentlemen, the guy downloaded all the millions. We went straight, we picked the chair. So on Monday when we went to pay, the lady there was laughing when he saw us. I said, well, we told you we were coming to pay. <laughs> she was like, <laughs> How I wish I could see the lady there, that lady, you know, on Saturday when we came, you know, we didn't have the money. But she looked like, you know, this Lebanese and all that. So there was no way she could understand what I was saying. So I just left her. <laughs> But the truth of the matter and the good news is that we got what we wanted. Now you see, I was praying. God said, until you take up responsibility, you won't see anything. So I don't know how many people are in faith here over some things. It requires responsibility on your part for your faith to deliver. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So our faith for 2023 requires this responsibility. That's why the suffering is not only for Christ. Everybody that must experience that same glory, ladies and gentlemen, we must have a season of that suffering. Do you notice that Jesus did not enter into the glory aspect of his ministry and of his life until he has suffered 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness? Try one day fast, you will understand suffering. The first day I tried long fast till 6 p.m., we were traveling from Ushoko to Ibarra to go and see the man of God who said we should come. As we were going, the rivers on the road, I wanted the bus to stop so that I can fly into it to go and drink water. I was so thirsty that I didn't even mind that even river water, whether they pour dirty things there or not, I mean, it wasn't my concern anymore. Just give me something to drink. My soul was thirsty. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And somebody went 40 days. 
By the time he came down, the Bible said in Luke chapter 4, verse 14, he came down in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> and his fame went about. The glory of God started redounding on his life. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. After these two weeks, it will be clear to every devil that something is pronounced on your life. Everywhere you go, the glory of God will begin to shine in your life. Every direction you face, I'm talking to somebody here, doors will be opening everywhere. Of their own accord, I see business doors opening. Of their own accord, I see doors even of favor opening everywhere. Every direction you go, unfathomable things will be happening to your credit. When good things happen, they will ascribe it to you. When bad things happen, your absence will be registered there. When they say it is a crash, you will not be there. I am prophesying over somebody here. When they say it's a shipwreck, you will not be there. When they say it's a plane crash, you will not be there. When they say it is a collapse, you will be found missing. I am prophesying over your life. Everything is walking in your direction. This season, you will have testimonies. You will have testimonies. The Lord is telling me that I should tell people here. He said, month by month, people will have testimonies is registered. He said, and for everyone that is smart, this December you write it down. This December won't go without my registered testimony. So I heard the Lord saying, three days time, somebody will have a giant testimony. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is you. Let the human be most receiving in the house. Ah, 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 ah. The Lord said, there's someone here that never favored you. Maybe he has been promising, but never did. God said, I should let you know you will get the favor now. <laughs> you will get the favor now. <laughs> You will get the favor now. In fact, you have the favor now. Because that is yours. Come and shout a lot. Amen. Amen. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? What are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? Jesus had to go through self-denial, the suffering. That's the suffering we're talking about. Before he could enter into that glory. He came out of 40 days. The Bible says he's famous. Ah, he went to Nazareth. He said he's not the capital. Of we knew him here now. Ladies and gentlemen, a different you is emerging. After these two weeks, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, everybody will see you and they will find it very difficult to ascribe you to your past. Ah, hit somebody half. I said, don't make that mistake. A new me is coming out. I say, new me is emerging. I say, new me is coming out. Come on, say it again. A new me is shooting up. Glory be to God. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? They could not, ladies and gentlemen, relate with him because he has surpassed his past. Something catapulted him to a new height of glory. Do you understand what I'm talking about? A season of self-denial. A season of what? Of suffering. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Jesus said, he that must follow him. Follow me. Let him carry his cross. Deny himself. And what? Carry his cross. And do what? And follow me. So everybody, ladies and gentlemen, has that price to pay. Everybody has a season of self-denial to pay before you can enter into glory. <laughs> that is the reason why this suffering, ladies and gentlemen, is a necessity for glory manifestation. In 1 Peter chapter number 4 and verse number 13. 1 Peter chapter number 4 and verse number 13. The Bible said, rejoice in that you are partakers of his suffering. Uh, so that when his glory will be revealed, he said, your heart will be made glad even in rejoicing. He said, rejoice now in that you are partakers of his, of his suffering. Uh, why am I rejoicing? Because you are partaking of his suffering. Because of necessity, there must be glory after suffering. After self-denial of necessity, there must be manifestations of God. For the Lord that we serve does not lie. The Bible said, for the strength of Israel does not lie. You will not pay the price and the Almighty will deny you of that glory. It's not possible. So this is the assurance. This is the consolation that we have. By these two immutable things that it's impossible for God to lie. If you can go through the suffering of necessity, we experience the glory. He said, rejoice in that ye are partakers of his glory, of his sufferings now. So that when the glory is revealed, he said, your heart will be made glad. <laughs> Rejoicing. Eh? You will also, do you understand what I'm talking about? Because if you partake of his suffering, you will surely partake of his what? Of his glory. That's what he's saying. In Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 17. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 17. The Bible says that... We are, of course, he uh, uh, said, if we are here, then we are joint heirs with Christ. He said, be so, that we suffer with him, then we will also share in his what? In his glory. So, you, you can't suffer with him and not share of his glory. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw the glory of God as the power of God redounding on him. Everything has strength to him. 
He will tell whether stop and whether will cease. He will walk on waters. That is glory. Ladies and gentlemen, he will join cut off here back to heat and everything will be in, will be in shape. Ladies and gentlemen, he will say go fish money will come. That means there is no financial retardation, no financial, ladies and gentlemen, awkwardness applicable to him at any season. You, he cannot be cornered. He went to the dungeon, the darkest dungeon of hell. The Bible said, thou shalt not forget my soul in hell, for thou shalt not allow your holy one to see corruption. Even in hell! Ladies and gentlemen, he came out of it. In the darkest, there was no way hell could corner him. Everywhere he went, ladies and gentlemen, results were generated. Radius random power was moving. He entered into city, was the joy of the city. He entered into towns, ladies and gentlemen, the celebrations of humanity there. Ah, he was the master of the universe. Wherever he was, everything was answering to him. Why? He wasn't like that. He was the carpenter that made the roof in my house. He was the one that amended my window. He was the whatever. There was nothing divine about him. There was nothing, you know, to be celebrated about him. But ladies and gentlemen, he went through the suffering and glory started. And Jesus is saying that there's somebody under the sound of my voice. All through 2023, and he was... He said, there's somebody under the sound of my voice. All through 2023, the streams of glory will be surrounding your life. I said, supernatural provisions will be elevating you. Men will look at you and all they will see is the mighty hand even of God in provisions, bringing joy. I said, bringing peace, bringing satisfaction, bringing turnaround in the lives of your children. Mama, you will rejoice over your children. Every dad in the house, you will rejoice over your jobs. Rejoice over your marriages because that year God will settle you. I said, God will settle you. Did you see? see? I see you settled. Lift up your five fingers and shout, I am set. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Because that year is meant to be a year with a difference in your life. So there must be self denial. There must be what? Self denial. If we go. Through this self-denial, Jesus went through it. He had the glory. That was a man in human history. We call him Helen. They told him, they said, Ah, oh God, the way you preach, we can see you should be able to walk in God's power. He will be talking of God's power that he never experienced. They said there is a man called Hora Robot. He does, he does meetings and God is using him mightily. Can you go for his meeting? And then Helen went and sat somewhere and he was watching. Ah. And a robot will be like, you know, I'm going to pray for you right now. You will be healed. And he'll lay hands on the blind eyes. The blind eyes open instantly. And he'll lay hands on, on the lame man. And the lame man stood up and started walking. And he'll ha. And then Helen will say, ah, I also can walk in God's power like this. Hey, Helen had been preaching since 1936. Preaching every day. 1935, 1936. Now, this is 1949. He said, you know what? I'm going to go and lock up myself. There is a price to pay. If there is a glory, there is a price. If there is a glory, there is what? He locked up himself, ladies and gentlemen, for days on ending. He was just there. And he told his wife, I said, don't disturb me. Don't, if I don't call for food, don't bring any food. <coughs> locked himself up and started, Yabra, Yegeto, Yembra, Yagata. <laughs> and he was praying. And he was fasting. And when he, Helen, was coming out of that room, ladies and gentlemen, they said he picked his heart. He picked his Bible and he started looking for the sick. <laughs> he laid hands on the first blind eyes, the blind eyes opened. Laid hands on the lame, the lame started walking. Until he Helen started calling for crusades. And they will bring impossible cases. You will see God like this, eh? Big like this. Like this. Before everybody, he Helen would lay hands on him and the God will disappear. You will see somebody. I was watching a one with Pastor Tosin. The leg was short. And then Helen said, my goodness, for this to happen, this guy would be a miracle. And then he laid hands on the leg. And he started putting the leg. The person was sitting up. The person stood up. Everybody said, the leg was not, was not balanced. The person walked. The leg wasn't balanced again. He said, sit down again. And he pulled it until the leg became Short leg. And he pulled and the leg became balanced. He Helen himself jumped. He said, this is a miracle. He said, the reason why some people are not rejoicing is because they have never experienced a miracle before. <laughs> <laughs> you understand know, you know, what I'm talking about? I, I, I mean... A fat woman came to hear Helen. Fat like this for everybody. I'm too big. I don't. Helen looked and said, I'm going to lay hands on you now. On TV, on camera. 
lay hands on the woman, bah, the woman fell under power. By the time the woman stood up, ladies and gentlemen, the woman slimmed to size. All her, all her underwears, everything came down. S straight. Power. <laughs> ah! Or, uh, Robert Ledon said, indeed, it was God's great power. They call him God's, they call him God's, God's man of faith and power. But you see, there must be that time of total shut out, total dedication for that glory to start. A. Harlan today died 1970. We are still talking about him now. That is 52 years ago. The whole world, there is no day nobody watches about A. Harlan or nobody studies about A. Harlan or nobody. A. Harlan's life has challenged many people into glory. A. Harlan raised R.W. Schumbach. Do you understand what I'm talking about? A. Harlan walked in so much of power and so much of miracles in his days that in fact, ah, Robin said, indeed, that man was God's great power. But he knew for that glory to boom forth. Now, please understand, every field is power. In so far as it is divinity working in your life. The Bible made us to understand something very strongly. That there is a power to get wet. Am I right? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. And thou shalt remember the Lord thy God that giveth the power to do what? So when you see things working, that's the power at work in Solomon. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when you see things working on every side for you, Please understand, there are different fields of God's power. We are not just talking about laying hands on the sick. No, there are different fields of God's power and glory that you want to experience. Please understand, there is a price to pay. <laughs> there is a price to pay. T.L. Osborne he went to India and he preached for two years with his wife and he did not win a single soul. He preached and preached and preached. You go on mission and you did not... So they came back through the coast of California and they promised his wife, said, we will never go. I will never take you on a full-time journey again. The wife was like, ah. for two years and we were preaching heavily and we did not win one soul. Nobody gave their life to Christ. Ah. The others, no, he, felt, he felt disappointed. And suddenly they told him, they said there was a man that was coming to his area for a crusade <laughs> by the name, uh, 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 um, the prophet of God, what was his name? Uh, William Branham. And then he went for William Branham's meeting. And William Branham was preaching and everybody was sleeping. And suddenly he said, oh, my angels are here. Power started moving. Cloud filled the whole place that people could not see again. You understand what I'm talking about? And fire was burning. Literal fire. And this man was talking. He would just say, there's someone here. He said, come, let me talk to you. I can see there's cancer located. It's located in your kidney. Oh, oh, your uncle told you to come for this crusade. You were planning to go see a doctor in California. And then you got let off your uncle. That's why you came here. Oh, you came from a city that had a lot of palms. Oh, it's Nevada, right? And the address of your house is number so, 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 so. And so, so, so. And the person will be like, ah! He said, if God could know this about you, don't you think he has taken that cancer away? He said, you can go, you're healed. As the person turns, the cancer disappears. And that was how it was healing. And it was healing. And it was healing. Instantly, blind eyes opening. The limb walking. Terrific. And T.L. Lossman was here, ah, at every miracle, he was like, ah, I can do this. I can do this. As he left that meeting, he just went and locked up himself in the vestry of his church. And he told his wife, Mau, 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 Mau. You know, if you're not very careful, family can pull you out of consecration. They are very good in, in trying to love you. They will extract you out. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So that's what the Bible says. When you go into a closet, shut your door. Why are you short? Is he a, a gay stranger? No, you are ready. You're closer. I want to let you know. I believe I'm talking to somebody. I know women will not say amen to what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have a point. <laughs> you know what God is talking about? There must be a time we separate for God. That's all I'm saying. Family time for family time. God for what? Come on, am I talking to God's people? If you are receiving something, shout amen. amen. So T.L. Osborne just moved straight into a season of consecration. Locked up himself in that place and began to pray. Ya bro, ya ghetto, ya bra. Ha. Every miracle that William Branham did, T.L. Osborne would say, I can do this. He was there with his wife. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And you know what? As he was saying, I said, Jesus was hearing. So after the third day of Yambra Yagata fasting in the vestry, Jesus appeared to me. Whether in a trance, whether in a dream. And Jesus just pointed to him. He said, yes, you can. That was all Jesus said. He said, yes, you can. But make sure you do something about it. And Jesus left. He disappeared. 
He said, yes, you can. That means every I can do this, he was saying. Jesus said, yes, you can. That you can be skyscraper. Jesus is saying today. And I'm hearing him telling me to tell you, yes, you can. But do something about it. <laughs> that you can be an employer of labor. 2023. Jesus said what? Yes, you can. I went to bless a house for somebody yesterday. This man, I was praying for him at his body. And I lay hands and said, sir, you are collecting salary now. You are a banker. I said, God told me that you're supposed to be CEO and MD. He looked at me and he started laughing. Do you know what I'm talking about? May God discomfit some people out of the zone of comfort so that they can enter, ladies and gentlemen, into what I call the proper design of God's destiny for their life. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So I said, this is what I see. And ladies and gentlemen, he started. He came to me and said, Pastor, all I have is 27 million. I said, we can start. And then he started the lending house. And I, I, we started. And we started pray, I prayed with him. And the thing started growing. And God began to bring more help. And it started growing. Ah. And it came one day, he said, it has become 300 million. Ah, I said, that's good. And we prayed again. And then one day he said, I have bought a house now. The lending house now has a house. I said, Pastor told me, go and bless the house. Pastor told me, went. He blessed the house. And then he called me again. He said, I bought a house. He lucky. Like uh, so come and bless. And I went and I blessed. And then he called me again. He said, the house that we went to bless yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, probably that compound should be maybe as big as this or this one and that one. There is virtually nothing you want to see in that compound that you don't find in a very notable place. Ladies and gentlemen, swimming pools everywhere. I said, so yesterday when I was preaching there, I said, you, you were collecting salary. The day I told you this, you were laughing. You're almost kicking against me, the pastor, what are you talking about now? <laughs> I said, but now, God has done it that you're now started, and you know what, from one company to the other, is now opening. It's now opening. I said, this is what God said is your destiny. Now, the same God who spoke to me, spoke to me last week to tell the church. It's the same one. He said this week, I've said this year that we are entering into. Many of you, you will have an experience of a change of status. <laughs> but there is a price. There is what? T.L. Osborne went into it. And after he came out, he just called for a healing meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, he went to India, <laughs> where he failed for two years. And he went with his wife now. Again. And when he was there, he now preached in India. He preached with all his heart, called for crusades, spent money, a lot of people came. And then he said, whoever wants to give his life to Christ, you know, nobody, nobody answered. Nobody answered. Ah. After he preached and preached and preached, he said, nobody answered. He just went and he brought out a blind woman that all of them knew was blind. He brought her out before everybody. He lay hands on the blind eyes and commanded the eyes to see and the eyes saw. The whole place went to the wire. They started speaking. Yabra. And I said, whoever wants to give his life to Christ, everybody came out to give his life. People need to see the glory to bow. <laughs> I said, what to make your word bow? <laughs> it's coming on your life this season. <laughs> I'm speaking to somebody here. You are entering into greater glory. <laughs> Lift up holy hands and say, glory is my portion. <laughs> Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you see, they needed to pay the price to, to walk in that glory. And from that day, to the day T.L. Osborne died, he was walking in power. Ah! Bishop Eribo was talking about one miracle T.L. Osborne did. He was on, on a meeting, and somebody had a short leg, very short, and he told the person, sit down. The person sat on the floor, and pulled the leg, and the leg came out longer than the other, and told the person, the person stood up, and the leg that was short, now longer than the other, he said, sit down again, push it in, the thing went back. <laughs> he got up and tell us what was laying hands and himself fell under the power. Ah! He said, This man since 19, is it 50? He still walked. Tell us what just died about probably seven years ago. Till he died, he was still walking in that power. Do you understand? I'm talking about? Bishop went to meet him when he was old and he was, Bishop said, He told Bishop, said, I'm going for a crusade. He said, So Bishop, Bishop knelt down for, for him to pray for Bishop and he prayed. And then, it was he not told Bishop, pray, pray for me too. And T.L. Osborne went down and he said, eh? Bishop said, hey, what? Ah, you are the father of my own father. He's the father of uh, Archbishop Benson. That was, uh, ah, can I not? Ah, he said, hey, what? <laughs> but, you know, it just shows the humility of the man. He said, till death, that man was still walking him. There's something coming on your life. Till the day you leave this world, it shall still be returning on your destiny. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the price. Let me tell somebody, I'm ready for the price. What is the price? Glory be to God in the highest. So, it is so clear that this glory lays this demand. And we need to pay the price. The price is working with God. 
to be able, ladies and gentlemen, to bring to pass all that God wants to do. Every manifestation you are going to experience, which is called, which is called the glory of God, or the manifestation of his power, ladies and gentlemen, requires you and God working together. The Bible says, Jesus speaking in John chapter number 5 and verse number 17. He said, my father walketh it at all and I work. John 5, 17. My father walketh it at all and I work. That is to say, my father is walking and me, I'm not sleeping. I don't see shake money. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, every believer that wants to go to sleep, believing that God will do everything, just everything just to be proper. You are, you are wasting your time. As the Father is working, there must be a contemporaneity and a synergy of operation between you and God for the glory to be delivered in your life. So Jesus is saying, everything you see manifesting in my life right now, the blind seeing the lame walking, everything, my God being turned around, redemption being established for humanity. He said, it is principally because Baba who does not sleep nor slumber is working. And me to hear, I'm what? And then we are connected in delivery. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So as God is working, somebody also must pay a price. Oh yeah, you can't pay without God. And God will not do it without you. Write it down. You can't pay without God and God will not do it without you. God told Joshua, he told Moses, what to do to defeat the Amalekites. Joshua, you go and fight. Why I go to the mountain? Moses lifted up his eyes. Joshua was fighting. When the hand of Moses came down, everything went against Israel. Israel, Israel was, was slain before the enemies. When the hand of Moses was raised, Israel was prevailing. So they stayed the hand. There will be destiny helpers that will help you that year. And speak, uh, the Lord said there's somebody at the hopper part of this week. He said a big helper is going to arise for you. I said destiny helpers will arise for you. Destiny helpers will arise for you. Destiny helpers will arise for you. In January, you will walk in help. In March, in February, you will walk in help. In April and in May, you will walk in help. They will just locate you and bring you to your doorstep. Till December, it will be celebrations of help. The Holy Ghost will use several men and women for you because you believe that let him and be the most receiving in the house. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? Are we on point? Are we receiving something? Should I continue? Glory be to God. <laughs> Glory be to his holy name. <laughs> what was I say before? Huh? Huh? Jesus. Okay. You can't pay the price without God. And God will not bring anything to pass without you. Am I right? So, Moses and Joshua. So, Joshua was doing the physical. Moses was doing the what? The spiritual. That's it. I see so many students fasting and fasting and praying and praying without reading their books. They will fail. There must be Joshua and Moses for the victory to be delivered. You will pray as though that is all you need to do to pass. And you will read as though that's all you need to do to pass as well. Then the victory will be delivered. Glory be to God. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So there must be a contemporaneity of activities between divinity, ladies and gentlemen, and humanity. The real hypostatic status of your life must be put to play. For you to see what God is saying in 2024. That's what God is saying. We must be willing and we must be ready to work and to put our efforts into action. The Bible says in Psalm 127, starting from verse number 1. It said, except the Lord builds the house. Those that build it, they labor in what? In vain. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchmen, they stay awake. In vain. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So without the practical involvement of God, ladies and gentlemen, my effort can't deliver anything. That's what God is saying. Jesus said, without me, ye can do nothing. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Without me, remove me from the equation. Everything is zero. Add me to the equation. You have the glory. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So everything will work only when he's at the center. And you give him his place. <laughs> in Job chapter number one and verse number nine, Satan said, Does Job serve God for nothing? Have you not made an edge around him? Have you not made an edge around his house? Round all that he has? You have blessed the works of his hands. And his goods have increased in the land. Am I right? Everything you see Job, uh, Satan saying is, Have you not? Have you not? You've made an edge around him. You've made an edge around his house. You've made an edge around his house. You have blessed the works of his hands. It's good. So what he's saying is, your involvement in his life is practically responsible for the prosperity we see registered in his destiny. Without you being there, nothing will work. So divine participation is the secret for our manifestation. 
I repeat myself, divine participation. We have to get God involved. We have to get God engaged. We have to do what we need to do to move him into action. So that, ladies and gentlemen, what we do, we produce bountifully that year. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the price. And God is saying, I want you to co-labor with me in this price. So, these two weeks, we have the privilege to co-labor with God. First Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 9. The Bible says, you are co-laborers with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. We are co-laborers with God. We are God's husbandry. And we are God's what? God's building. We are co-laborers with God. So, for God to build your life, you are God's building. God is the one building it. But for God to build it, God said, I need you to help you. We are co-laborers. I don't share your money. Please read it in the, in the Holy Ghost. Now, it's very clear. It's in white and black. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So, I need you to help you. So, ladies and gentlemen, don't abscond these two weeks. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When they say do this, please do it with all your heart. We are co-laborers with God in the erection of our destiny. God will not just do it without me. He needs me to help me. Glory be to God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 1, the Bible says, as co-laborers with God, we beseech you. So Paul the Apostle had a proper understanding that everything he's doing, ladies and gentlemen, is in line with divinity. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's why I told you there is a divine part to you and there is a human part to you. When, you know, when Pastor Lewis was speaking, and I was talking about, you see, the essence of this message is about you. That you have an apostatic status. People were just looking at it. No, it's only Jesus, not me. Ah, what are you talking about? Me, I'm human. He is, he is God. No, he came to show you a perfect example to follow. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible says, he is who are you? In fast, First Peter chapter 5, verse number 5, the Bible says, whereby he has given us this exceeding great, from 5, verse 4, whereby he has given us this exceeding great and precious promises, <laughs> by which we are made partakers of his what? Divine nature. So, ladies and gentlemen, you are not just human. You have a divine nature in you. Divinity and humility, ladies and gentlemen, coincide in you. Glory be to God. Clap for Jesus. Celebrate yourself. <laughs> Celebrate yourself in God. Thank God for who you are. <laughs> so we have been called to participate in divinity, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. We participate in divine matters. <laughs> I partake of it, and I participate in it. Glory be to God. So what am I just trying to say, ladies and gentlemen? Um, mm, <laughs> God is saying that he has called us to work together, to pull our hypostatic status, to involve divinity and humanity in the delivery of this glory. And what is the price that we are to pay? Ladies and gentlemen, very simple. We are going to pray and we are going to praise. We are going to what? And we are going to praise. You see, previous years we have praised. We have praised. We have praised. Before then, we prayed and prayed and prayed. And God said, I want right now the combination of the two. Oh, glory be to God. <laughs> I want the combination of what? Of the two. So we are praying and we are praising. The Bible said in Philippians chapter number 4 and verse number 6. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. But in everything through prayers and supplications with thanksgiving. Make your request known unto God. Now be anxious for nothing. It doesn't matter how weighing that situation is. It doesn't matter how pressing it is. Oh pastor this thing must change. I've just been going through this year in year out. The Bible says be anxious for nothing. Don't be worried. Don't be troubled about this need. The Bible said there is something that can handle it. He said in everything through prayers and supplications with what? Thanksgiving. Then you can't engage these two weapons and that's situation remains the same. He said in everything to prayers and supplications with thanksgiving make your request known unto God. He said and what follows? And the peace of God which is the answer of God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding shall garrison your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And finally brethren you will always enter the final zone. You will always enter the ultimate. You will move from underneath pass through the penultimate and enter the maximum. Ladies and gentlemen you will begin to operate at the level of glory. Ladies and gentlemen that humanity has never entered before. I am prophesying over somebody here. The glory that has never been shown in your life. I mean the unprecedented kind and dimension of God's power display. You will see it starting from today in your life. Ah! 
Somebody didn't say amen. Somebody said amen and around your reproductive area, your waist area, I saw healing enter immediately. Yeah. By the power of the Holy Spirit of God, I said the kind of power you never saw before, I see it on display in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 2023, many of you will build your houses. Yeah. We buy several houses. I am speaking by the spirit. The anointing is on me right now. To the sensitive, you will know when the auction comes on me. I am talking by the spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, it will be so easy. I mean, so you know how easy it is for me to buy a pen, to buy a biro. Eh? He said this pen is 100 naira, 500 naira. You know, it's easy for me to buy. That is how it will be easy for you to be buying houses 2023. Except God has not come to anyone that believes. I see this grace resting on you now. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Because when God begins to move, you see, ladies and gentlemen, I've seen miracles. Ah, ah, if I were to start sharing testimonies here of what God did even within the last one week, many of us would think God is partial. I am I'm not lying to you. With this God, with this God, with Baba, because you have called me this afternoon, bless somebody here. Yeah. Somebody will come out this afternoon with a testing. Ah, I'm under the unction. I speak by the power of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, receive it now. Yeah. Take your seat. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So what am I saying, ladies and gentlemen? Ah, the Lord said there is a lady here. He says, you're walking out of this year, you're walking with your spouse. <laughs> Glory be to God. So, what was I, I say before? Philippians chapter 4, the Bible says, therefore, combine it together. Prayer and uh, thanksgiving. A transition says, he said, don't worry about anything, but tell God about everything, and don't forget to thank him for answers. I love that. Don't worry about anything, but tell him about everything. Ah, aremuo okore bururu so fun jesu so fun jesu o lore to da ju ko tun sore bire so fun jesu ni ko just tell jesus just tell jesus Lihugza alarati mixa zobra ligarusta. What a precious opportunity we have to talk to Jesus. Ah, the hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that elevates me into the heavenly. Sikebo shadabaya kabra digarusta, membro digarusta zibrodia lakabaya face to face with the Father, sharing my heart with Him. God is saying there is a necessity of a sweet hour of prayer then there will be a necessity of praise as well. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not prayer alone without praise. And it's not praise alone without prayer. We are combining the two. In Daniel chapter number 6 and verse number 10, the Bible says, after Daniel saw that the decree has been signed, he went straight into his house and opened the windows of his chamber towards Jerusalem. And he knelt down three times and prayed, giving thanks as it was his custom. He prayed and he also gave thanks. He prayed first and he gave thanks second. Ladies and gentlemen, he combined the two. He combined what? The two. Ladies and gentlemen, the end result of that chapter was I landed, ladies and gentlemen, in the lion's den. And the king came in the morning. Mambrodia lekeboyakada. Ne having been cast into that den. And the stone has been rolled against the mouth of the den. And it has been sealed with the signet of the king. That the purpose be not changed against Daniel. According to the law of the Medes and Persians that utter it not. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. Whatever they have called irreversible. Whatever they have called unchangeable. Whatever they have called incurable in your life by the power of the spirit of the living God. This season of dedication, I see that purpose change and altered completely in your favor. Everything that they say cannot change will be changed. Everything that has been perpetual, unwanted, and undesirable in your life by the power of the Holy Ghost, such, my God, undesirability shall be reversed in the name of Jesus. And you will, my God, with glory swim into higher realms of praise, a power of celebrations, because God is changing everything. He prayed and he thanked God. He prayed and he praised God. He ate into the lion's den. The next morning the king came. And cried with a lamentable voice, Oh Daniel, Saba 
God of the Most High God. He says, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions, and uh, is he able to deliver you? And Daniel replied, The one that was expected to be dead, he cried out, He said, Oh, King, live forever. As long as innocence was found in me, the Lord sent his angel. I, yeah, divinity moved. I said, Something moved. Something shifted in my favor. I said, The power of God moved. Those that excel in strength went into action and favored me. I could have been reduced to bones. My bones could have been cracked. But something happened. They moved because I engaged prayers and I engaged praise. I don't care what the devil is planning for you with these two engagements. I see you coming out in the name of Jesus. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Something happened because I engaged the two. Ladies and gentlemen, three kings came on to against King Jehoshaphat. Ah, and you see, this is a challenge that they had no capacity to resolve. The man went down on his knees and started praying. Second Chronicles chapter number 20. The Bible said from verse 5, all Jerusalem, from verse 4 to verse 5, all Jerusalem and Judah gathered before the Lord. And Jehoshaphat opened his mouth as their leader, their king, and started talking to God. He engaged prayers. He engaged prayers. He engaged prayers. Oh, thou, oh Lord, will you not fight for us? Verses 11 and 12. He said, Lord, he said, we have no might against this people. We don't even have it at all. Three kings. The king of Moab, the king of Monsiah, and the king of Amnon. Three of them against Judah alone. He said we don't have even one of them we may not be able to face. Now imagine three. He said we have no might, but we have you that has every might against them. You have every power against them. We have you that have everything to demolish and deliver the victory to us. Ah, without us sweating, without us doing anything, you are able to do it, oh God. But this this is what we need to do to him for you. And he prayed. He said, we have no might against these people. But all eyes, all eyes, all eyes are on you. Can somebody shout unto God this week? The Lord, all of my eyes are on you. I don't have any uncle to help me. I don't have any husband to help me. I got no wife to help me. I got no children to give me dividend. I got, I'm not qualified for pensions. I'm not qualified for this. I'm not qualified. If I'm going to see glory, daddy, all eyes are on you. If you don't move, I'm done for. If you don't move, nothing will happen for me. Baba, you are my holy Lord. All eyes are on you. If somebody can cry out unto God that way, the Bible says that all Israel stood before God. Even with their little ones, with their wives and with their children. Then the Spirit of God. Oh, my brother, Gadosta, the engagement of divinity. My brother, Gadosta, the top person to the Trinity moved. The spirituals was triggered. And it started moving upon Jehazah. Even the son of Zechariah and prophecy started. And the next day, the Bible says, verse 22, and the man appointed singers unto God. We have appointed five to six singers unto God. After prayer, he appointed singers. After prayer, Daniel prayed. After prayers, we are appointed singers to it. And as they appointed singers, you see, when you pray, the singing season will be the in gathering season. I said, the singing season will be the manifestation, even of the results that you have collected in prayers will be the time when the Spirit of God will go into proper manifestation. Every prophecy will begin to find expression. As prophecy come out, Ah, the man prophesied. You don't need to fight in this battle. The battle belongs to God. Yes, but where are they? They are still seeing the enemy standing. They are still seeing the adversary standing. But when they began to praise, verse 22, the Bible says, when they began to praise God, the Bible says, and they sang and praised God. They didn't sing and praise themselves. They didn't sing and praise humanity. They didn't sing, you see, uzobu, uzobu, onye, ba onye. Somebody is singing, but they are praising themselves, you know, tearing up themselves. Am I talking to somebody here? But this time they didn't sing that way. Ladies and gentlemen, they began to praise God in the beauty of holiness. They began to engage all their faculties in the manifestation, I mean in the magnification of the most high God. And Baba said, in Jamaica, what are you looking for? Yeah, what are you still waiting for going to action? Angel, you range Gabriel, all the angels. So yeah, go. The Bible said Israel got even into the place of the battle. They looked and they saw no man. Every adversary was already ready on the floor. All challenges 2023 will lay posture before you because the paralyzing hand of God will go ahead of you. 
it will paralyze all the limits. It will paralyze all adversities. It will paralyze all contradictions. It will remove all challenges. It will reverse every negativity. I am prophesying on somebody here. Retardation will never be your portion that year. Deceleration will never constitute your experience. By the power of the Spirit of God, I see you moving into greater glory. You are stepping in there. Not to meet challenges anymore, but to gather the spoils. As they about to bring in the plunders. I prophesy that year, you will gather spoils. You will not toil that year. You will not hear bread out of the sweat of your face. I said sweetness will not come out of sweat. You will not hear sweet out of sweat. You will not, ladies and gentlemen, not even go into exertion before glory will manifest. Because you are engaging divinity now. We are moving the spirit of God and the angels of the most time to action. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 2023 will be the crown of glory for you. They prayed and they preached. And in Acts chapter number 16, the Bible said, but Paul was flogged. Man, oh man, God led them there. Acts chapter 16, verse number 9, the Bible said, and Paul saw a vision of the man of, the man of Macedonia saying, come to Macedonia and Ebrus. And verse number 10, brother Paul, the Bible said, we gathered us already, that the Lord has sent us on to Macedonia. Verses 16 and 17, in Macedonia, brother Paul, the apostle, cast out one lady that was possessed and flushed the lady out, flushed the demon out of her. The Bible said that lady had the spirit of divination and all the people that, uh, you know, uh, were using her to make money, they arrested them, brought them before the magistrate. Wrong judgment was acquired against them, flogged them properly, dragged them on the floor, flung them into prison. The Bible said, and the jailer receiving such a charge, to my God, even to secure them very well, he put them in a the inner prison. Now the Bible said there was no night in the prison. The Bible made us to understand that their legs were hot and iron, and their hands in fetters. The ladies and gentlemen, there was nothing attractive, nothing beautiful. Remember, the Bible said that they had wounds, bleeding. They can't even, even when mosquito was biting them, they couldn't even scratch it. Their hands were tied down, their legs were tied down. There was nothing they could do. They were just bleeding. They can't scratch. They were, as in excessive pain. And Brother Paul woke Brother Silas up in the middle of the night. He said, Brother Silas, we got to pray. He said, Brother Silas, we got to pray. The spirit has to move. He said, Brother Silas, we got to pray. There must be the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. And then they began to pray. What kind of prayer would they pray under that situation? Ladies and gentlemen, they began to pray in the spirit. Remember what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 18 and verse number chapter 14 and verse number 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse number 18. He said, I pray in tongues more than ye all. As he began to pray, that means all of his prayer largely, they were in tongues. Magzi, Memementa, Iragusa, Babrae. They prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And after they finished praying, he said, let's turn to praise that he has answered. And as they began to praise God. When they were praying, nothing happened. Pastor Tosin, when they called on God, they didn't see any manifestation. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, the Almighty heart, because his ears are open unto the Christ of the righteous. Am I talking to somebody here? But God is waiting for the time for manifestation. And these people say, you know what? We don't need to wait till tomorrow morning. We don't need, ladies and gentlemen, to wait till everlasting waiting. We don't need to wait for the next year before we can cause the manifest. Some people received some answers last year that are just manifesting now. Why? Because they don't know how to speed up manifestation. There is something praise does. It is a catalyst. A supernatural accelerator even of the manifestation of results obtained in the place of prayers. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you see they say let's switch over to praise. Ah, chapter number 16 and verse 25. They prayed and then as they started singing praises. And while they were singing praises, the most I go, Herujaja started manifesting in that place. Herujaja went into action. The Bible said there was an earthquake. How do I know that it, it, was, the, it, it was divinity that moved? In Acts of the, sorry, Matthew chapter number 28, after they put in Jesus in the tomb and put a big stone against it, that this one, it became a Jerazire, and they put some guards there that nobody should come and touch him. Elayo, the prophecy of God will never come to pass in his life. Now, ladies and gentlemen, 
gentlemen, if you are concealed that way, and everything seems, ladies and gentlemen, to be shot against you, all you can see is witchcraft, all you can see is sorcery, all you can see, ladies and gentlemen, is a display of the inimical power that seems to be prevalent over your situation, debarring the manifestation of your expected answers. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, I show you what to do. The Bible said the angel Lord descended over the place, and there was a mighty earthquake because the angel descended. There are power angels when they descend, there will be a mighty earthquake. The Bible said, number one, he rolled away the stone. Oh, Kutati, body just won't let this sit Oh, this sit Oh, that Jokole Lori. And the Bible said, all the guards, they laid down as dead. They could not even stand. That means, ladies and gentlemen, that all your enemies constitute nothing. When it comes to being an entrance to the manifestation of what God wants to do in your life, if only you know what to do to bring in those that excel in strength into action. Am I talking to somebody here? The Bible said, there, there was a mighty earthquake because the angel Lord decided that was the same thing that happened in that prison. Ah, there was a mighty earthquake. And the place began to rock. Ka, 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 ka. As he was rocking, chains started breaking. Bass. Chains started breaking. Bass. Same broke from their legs. I was in California. They said uh, this place they have uh, earthquake. I said, when did they have it last? They said, uh, is it five years ago? I said, okay, now earthquake is going to happen here. Ah. Uh, <laughs> As the said, he ran. He said, he said, this thing is going to happen now as this man is talking. Of. He said, this, I said, what will happen now? I said, what will happen now? And all of them said that they were looking. I said, you will see. I said, I want to see how earthquake feels. And you know, next thing I did, I just went to praise. I sing praises to your name. As I started, earthquake started. I said, it will happen now. I said, you will see it now. Oh, Lord. I said, the whole place just started moving. Woo. TV started falling. Bars, bows. Ah, it was a wonderful experience. Do you understand? He was rocking and I enjoyed it. The thing was moving like this, and was moving like this, and was moving like this, and was moving like this. I'm telling you the truth. The whole place was rocky. After the earthquake went, I said, you know, it registered fear inside everybody there. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The host said, Pastor, give me your account. I want to send something. How would they not send something? When they see power. <laughs> there is something praise can do. As he did it in the days of Paul, he can do it now. As we begin to praise God, there will be earthquakes. And the effect of it is that chains will break. Fetters will go off. Prison doors will be open. Salvation will happen to the jailer. Destiny purpose of going there will be established. Many people will be saved. Their, their wounds will be cured. I mean, they will be given food. Satisfaction will come. Comfort will be registered. And a big new beginning will start in their life. Remember the Bible says at midnight hour, they started praising God. Midnight simply means a season that marks the end of a season and introduces another season. As we begin to praise God, ladies and gentlemen, and start this last week of the year, we will be ending the whole season and a new beginning will start. So when we call it a new beginning, ladies and gentlemen, it is via praise. Clap for Jesus. So somebody catch what I'm talking about. They engage prayers and they engage praise. So what are we doing, ladies and gentlemen? We are engaging prayers. We are engaging prayers. The Pentecost and the kind of prayer we are engaging is speaking in tongues. We will pray all through this week. From now to Sunday. And then we will praise from Sunday to Sunday. The upper week. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So it will be prayers and praise. It will be prayers and praise. Let me look for 10 people, hit them high five, say it's inevitable. Prayers and praise. <laughs> 10 people, rise or go around, hit them. As you are hitting them, you are distributing blessings. <laughs> Give me a high five, prayers and praise. Praise and praise. Prayers and praise, mama. Prayers and praise. <laughs> inevitable. Inevitable. Come shake hands with me. Prayers and praise. Glory be to God. Prayers and praise. Prayers and praise. <laughs> Glory be to God. Prayers and praise. I said prayers and praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. So as we engage prayers this week and next week praise. Now please don't miss out on the do. Don't miss out on the do. This is the price to pay for the glory to be made manifest. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Don't come and tell somebody I will never miss out on the do. So that all through 2023 is manifestations galore. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Those that beat Paul yesterday now started begging them to leave their city. Ah, I'm talking to somebody here, Neoruko Jesu, where you have been ashamed before. 
where you have been shamified, disgraced. No, Ruko Jesu, it will be your area of grace. Where in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you have been tolerated in time past, you will be celebrated this time. By the power of God where you are being ignored. No, Ruko Jesu, it will be the place right now of your supernatural glory manifestation. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? That is what happens when the two are engaged. He turns around the story. You know, he turned around for Daniel. Those who plotted against him, they put them in the lion's den. Am I right? And Daniel was, and the Bible said, and Daniel prospered under Darius. Can you see? That's what it is. He will bring some down and he will elevate some. That is what he does. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the maximum glory. We are set for glory experience 2023. Oh, glory be to God. It is inevitable. Can you see it's even inevitable now? Clap for Jesus, somebody. <laughs> so the prayer we are praying loudly is going to be in tongues. Because there are so many things ahead of you in the spirit in 2023 that you don't even know of. So if you pray in understanding, you will be limited. In the Pentecostal chapter of the epistles, that's 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. That's the Pentecostal chapter of the epistles. Now please understand, the Bible talks about speaking in tongues all through that place. Now please understand, the Bible said, verse, verse 14, when I speak in tongues, my spirit prayed. My man has no pardon it. Now he said, I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in understanding also. You see, understanding is also. That's an addendum. That means the main line is in the spirit. <laughs> is somebody catch what I'm talking about? And then he went forward to say, I will, I will bless God. I will sing in the spirit. And I will sing in understanding also. I will bless God in the spirit. And I will bless in understanding also. So you will see that. He said, when you, when you bless God in the spirit, he said, you verily give thanks. Verses 16 and 17. That means you amply discharge the responsibility of praise on your life. Do you understand? So anytime we are praying in the spirit, no matter what we are doing, we are doing it very, very well. You are doing it very, very well. You are doing it to the, to the satisfaction of God. You are doing it very, very well. You very discharge this. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? We are engaging all relevant powers and forces applicable and available to us in the place of prayers, ladies and gentlemen, to move in results when we pray in the Holy Ghost. Now, let me let you know this. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, and that is when you pray in the Spirit. Now, please understand, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, what you are doing is you are engaging the Holy Spirit to pray. Now, when I engage my understanding to pray, human understanding is limited. When you engage your understanding to pray, you still get results. Now imagine where God is praying. It is impossible for you not to get results. Everything will begin to work together. That's why Romans chapter number 8 and verse 26, the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not how to pray as out, but the Spirit maketh intercessions for us. We groan is they cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart, knoweth the mind of the Spirit. Because when the Spirit prays for you, eh? he said, because when the Spirit intercedes, he intercedes, he prays according to the exact will of God. <laughs> that means the purpose of God for 2023, if God says you will build 10 houses, that is what the Spirit will be praying. You may be saying, Baba, just give me one house. And God says, I want to go 10. God, that purpose exactly is what the Spirit will be praying. It won't go lesser than that. It won't go sideways. Ladies and gentlemen, it will hit it with pinpoint accuracy. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So the Bible says, For the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. That's verse 27. Now, verse 28. When I pray this way, one thing I know, all things work together for good. For those that love God, I don't care how finances have been, it will begin to work together. I don't care how your head has been, it will begin to work together. I don't care, ladies and gentlemen, how challenged you have been. You have been trying to apply to school. I'm speaking to somebody here. And you have been restrained. I say everything will start working together for good. Everything will turn around and your advancement will manifest. I say everything will change and your prosperity will be established. I see development coming into somebody's life right now. And the Lord said this development is coming with speed. And because that is yours, let your amen be louder. Yay! Christmas gift. Receive in the name of Jesus. So when I begin to pray, everything, you know the meaning of everything. Eh? Everything works to everything. Excluding nothing. Marriage can work if I can pray. Finance can work, Pastor Tosin, if I can pray. I say health can work. Kidney can work. Oh. Liver can work. I say pancreas can work. Oh, come on, brother. Don't change the diet. Don't touch it. Change it. Leave it the way it is. Oh, I said before, man. <laughs> no, 
No need for application of pancake. Beauty can work. Uh, uh. <laughs> As in, without the application of pancake, the fairness of the face, the beauty of the countenance will become heavily attractive. It will not be attracting mere men. President, governors, ministers. I see Mr. Yobadi standing before president. I see Pastor Femi standing before president. I see everybody standing before president. I said, I want you to give the love my attract. I want to wear you alone. I want to know Glory be to God. I'm about to round up. The way you are pulling this function, I don't know. I'm just teaching and teaching. I think it's somebody laying demand on my, on my teaching engine. <laughs> but let me round up. Let me round up. The Pentecostal. The Pentecostal chapter. Lagada. <laughs> Pentecostal chapter. <laughs> From verse 1, 2, 3. The Bible says, Do. Lake Ebu Shakata. I speak in tongues. The Bible says, Whoever speaketh in an honor tongue speaketh not unto man but unto God. Am I right? I'll be it in the spirit. That is what? He speaketh mysteries. The Bible says, Whoever speaketh in an honor That's that point, Pentecostal chapter 1 Corinthians 14. He said, Whoever speaketh in an honor tongue edifies himself. He builds his life up. He raises it to a mighty edifice level. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So if your life has been on the floor, it can become a petes. Oh, my brother, Pastor said, if it can scabash. I said, it can become a petes. Talk, come on, talk to someone, say, it can become a petes. If it can scabash. That's glory be to God. Are you ready to scabash this week? I see petes being erected. I see, I see a mighty edifice being erected. I see, I see petes coming out. It can become a petes. If it can scabash. Mr. Ibadi can become big better. So. I'm telling you, more dollars can flow. I say more dollars can flow. I say more dollars can flow. Even this week, if you can scabash. Are you ready to scabash? Glory be to God. And you know one thing I love how one pray, one translation put that Romans hate. He said, when I engage this Pentecostal chapter, you know what happens? That Romans hate now says, he said, uh, though so the spirit of salvation he prays for us with grace that cannot be uttered. He said, and all things work together for good. And he says, and in all things, God work for the good of those. That means divinity will go into action. Manifestation of the spirit will start. Do you understand? Angels will go into action. And Mimima, the Lord of hosts, will go into action. Can I share this with you? The only chapter that is called the Pentecostal chapter of the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter, or the epistles, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, that chapter, that chapter, it was written to the Corinthians. Am I right? Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. This same Corinthians was the one, but Paul wrote the same letter. It's the same letter. It's the same for Corinthians. He wrote that letter once and posted it. One letter. Eh? He said, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. He said, you are, you are not behind in any gift of the Spirit. You are not behind in any. That means this church had all the gifts of the Spirit, all the manifestations of God. Heavily loaded with manifestations of God. Now, the gift of the Spirit is called the manifestation of God, the moves of the Spirit. First Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1 to verse 10. The Bible says concerning spirituals, I will not have you ignorant. Uh, it says so, 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 so. There are diversities of gifts. There are diversities of operations. There are diversities of, of, of administration. Yeah, the same Spirit. Yeah, the same God. Yeah, the same Lord. Uh, yeah, the same God that walketh all in all. Now, verse 7, the Bible says, the manifestation of the Spirit is given unto all to profit with that. To one is giving the word of wisdom. The word of knowledge. All those things, the gift of healing, prophecies, all of the Bible calls them the manifestation of the Spirit. And the Bible says, all oh, this work at that one and self same spirit. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Verse 11. Now, from verse 1, as to spiritual gifts, as to spirituals, the manifestation of the spirit, I will not have you ignorant. As to spirituals, I will not have you ignorant. As to spirit, the moves of the spirit, and bringing healing, bringing breakthroughs, bringing wealth, bringing word of wisdom to generate wealth, bringing everything, bringing sadness, bringing prosperity, bringing miracles. The, as to spiritual moves, and manifestation. I will not have you ignorant. Now you see, the, the Bible calls those things the gift of the Spirit. There was a child that never lacked any of those moves. The move of the Spirit was, was heavy in their midst. How? Because they were praying in tongues. It was a church heavily vested with tongue. That was the, they, they prayed in tongues so much that Brother Paul got out to send him to bring a balance and order 
to them. He said, the rest will I set in order. He began to set order all through 1 Corinthians 14. Go and read it. Do you know what I'm talking about? They were just crazily in tongue, jagada, yegete, to the point that even when the preacher is preaching, everybody is praying. Tongue. He said, no, no, no. If you pray in tongues, in that season, you pray silently. You can take bounty preachers or not. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Because everything was just jagada. So, hey, this one prophesying this way, this one prophesying. Ah! Do you understand? They were heavily vested in tongues. That's the reason why they were not behind in any spiritual move. Prophecy of scriptures. For holy men spoke. As they were moved by this. So all the moves of the spirit, all gifts, all manifestations, they were there. If you want to see all the moves of the spirit, 2023, we will pray in tongues largely all through the year, all through this week. We will pray in tongues largely. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be so terrific. It's going to be so terrific. You will live all that year with grace. But Paul said, by the grace given unto me, I labor more abundantly. So grace and labor producing heavy results. Why you pray in tongues like this? But Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you. That's the reason why, through mighty signs and wonders, the Bible says he has fully preached the gospel. Romans chapter 15 verse 18. He said, I fully preached the gospel. He fulfilled his full destiny through mighty signs. He said, I have finished my course. Not so many people said it. Why? Because he prayed in tongues. A lot. First Corinthians 14, verse 18. He said, I pray in tongues more than you. A church that was heavily vested with tongues. But Paul said, Me too, God, you think, you know? Ah! The stories of men, the secrets of men are in their stories. That's the secret of the life of Paul. Pastor Chris was sharing the secret of manifestations of miracles in his ministry. And he said, First Corinthians 14, verse 18. He said, I pray in tongues. He said, The more I pray, the more the move of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, do you want to see the move of God, the move of the Holy Ghost, and the move of angels? God will be working in that year. <laughs> Holy Ghost will be working, angels will be working. First Corinthians 13 verse 1, he said, do I speak in tongues of men and angels? Will be, this week we'll be giving instructions to angels as to what to do. As we are praying in the spirit, I speak in tongues of men and of angels. You'll be leaving instructions on angels. Ah, it will be an angelic year of victory. Those that excel in strength, we walk with you. To your feet rise. Let's give him praise. Oh. And my song shall ever oh, oh,
Hallelujah. As the choir begin to sing this song, everybody burst out in tongues. Begin to pray in the power of the Spirit right now. I'm saying grace resting on you. The spirit of supplication, the spirit of grace for supplication is being released right now. The grace of God to pray all through this week in tongues is being released. Maxo Kataya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are praying in tongues. You are driving. You are praying in tongues. You are walking on your work decks. You are praying in tongues. I say you are walking on the road. You are praying in tongues. You will be going on tongue stroll this week. Every day you will go on tongue stroll. You will do a lot in tongues. I say you will do a lot in tongues. Praying ahead of time. Moving mountains in the spirit. Engaging divinity mightily. I said releasing the powers of the spirit. Are you Lord God Almighty? What is the land? What is the land?
as the choir begins to sing this song, you have any petition in the house, begin to present it right now to the Lord. Father, I want this done before the end of this year. I want my Christmas gift. I want a special touch on my life. The anointing is so strong on this meeting. Lord, I want miracles. I want healing in my body. What is it that you desire of the Lord? Begin to talk to God right now. Oh, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift hands in worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to Him that can answer. Talk to Him. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your holy name. For you are great. Because he has given you a Christmas gift. Can you just bless him right now? Calling your name. Come on, just give him all the praise. Give him all the praise. I see so much of grace on your life. The activities of divinity. Glory be to God. Magnify his name. Oh, fast and oh, 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 pray in tongues all through this week. And all through next week, we will praise God. Glorify him. Everybody, praise the Lord. You know, it's been glorious in DGCC. Every time we experience His glory, every time. And I'm so grateful to God. I'm telling you, I'm so grateful. It has always been the cravings of my heart to see my sons and daughters demonstrating the powers of the Spirit. And that is the whole reason why God shared with me this week what was preached today unto us. Um, so that you and I can walk in glory. Amen. Amen. So it is a necessity laid on us that all through this week, please, let's make sure that we all walk in glory. Do you understand what I'm talking about? This, this church is going to be a church in 2023, starting from now, that will not be behind in any move of God. It will never be behind in any gift of the Spirit. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Every manifestation of the Spirit will be present in your life. Look at your two hands. Say, through my hands, several dead bodies would be raised. You see, the testimony we had today from Sister Tinuke Soje uh, would be multiplied in so many lives. You will enter into homes just as the Craig went into their home. And I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you enter into companies, and companies will turn around. My daughter here, she shared a testimony in her chamber. They said, if not for you, everything would have been dead there. That's how it would be. Your testimony will be that, look, I am the sustainer of this place by the flow of life through me. 
Philip entered into Samaria, there was great joy in the city. Am I right? Everywhere you enter 2023, there will be great joy there. You will not be behind in any move of the Spirit. Oh, glory be to God. Come and say it again. We will not be behind in any manifestations of the Spirit. Are you catching what I'm talking about? So, ladies and gentlemen, all through this week, make sure at least you do two hours speaking in tongues. Now, I don't say at most. So, never you take your minimum to be your maximum. And there are some of us that will do nine hours every day. Please. Because you can speak in tongues and do other things. Am I right? You can drive. Miss Yamu, you can make the Eba while praying in the Holy Ghost. Am I, am I right? Glory be to God. You can even sit in court while the judge is speaking and you are also speaking to God. At the same time, am I right? Uh -huh. The Bible says that if you are not in a place where you can pray, the Bible says let him speak silently unto God. Uh, you can be a silent whisperer. Anna prayed that brought the prophet that changed the entire patriarchal system in Israel to the monarchical system. And she was not shouting. The Bible says she was just only a her words were not heard, only her lips moved. Am I right? And the prophet, I'm sorry, the priest thought that she was drunk. So silently speaking, just doing like this. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, can bring a move that will change Nigeria. Did that move not change Israel? Answer me now. Anna prayed, somewhere came. Eh? Somewhere moved the Petraka system to the Monarca system, anointed the first king, anointed the second king. Ah, it's like giving birth to B. Graham, who has sworn in several American presidents. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So please understand, ladies and gentlemen, God is saying something here. The move of the Spirit will be terrific in our midst. And it will not just be through the hands of pastors. Even all of us will be terrific in the move. Lift up only and say the move of the Spirit. So at least two hours. Every, if you know that you have not finished doing it, you know that the one you pray says morning is five minutes. When it is about 9 p.m., there's no sleep for you that night. Oh, Lord, my God. There's what? Just remove yourself and go and sit down in the sitting room. Tell, tell the children to go and sleep. And you think you want to sleep, eh? Sit down on the floor. And if you sleep, rise up. Walk around. Amen? And they can go and light candle. Put it under your, under your, under, under your feet. And then they burn you small. You wake up. <laughs> you wake up. Amen? Uh -huh. So you just go around and go around and go around. And it is starting from today. I say, you, anybody to walk around, you say, you're alone. I'm saying. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? I could have decreed that they will leave the couple. It's all a matter of decrees. It's not by power nor by might, but by my word. The race is not to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. So all through this week, it is Scalagoza. <laughs> Every somebody say it is Scalagoza. <laughs> Maximandis. <laughs> Don't be tired. <laughs> Don't be lazy. Minimum of two hours can change your life forever. You know, Jesus said, you know what Jesus said? Can't you watch with me for one hour? Eh? Now, Pastor Tosin, DGC says, can't you watch with me for two hours? That Akim Balagun is not too much, Abi. Bagzobande, Ebrubaga, all the way home. <laughs> Nagazuga, Skata, Mirago, <laughs> Exizana. <laughs> give him all the glory. Somebody just lift up all the hands. Give him all the glory. Ah! DGCC will not be behind in any move of God. Oh, this is so glory. When God spoke to me, as in, a, you know, when you hear God, you trip. Ah! He said, like a child that was not behind in all the gifts. Gift means manifestations, the move of the Spirit. I, 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 I jumped. I said, God, if this is the key, I said, we are operating the key. Max Omangze. Talk to somebody, say Max Omangze. Alibaba Baratus. Remamangos. Paraga. Elihuza. Come next week and see greater glory. Now listen, that is for this week. For next week, it will not be. Ah, yeah, yeah. Everybody bam me jo. Everybody Please don't miss any 
this service next week. Listen, it is not for those who attend online in particular. When you have the chance of on ground, be on ground. You remember you are praising God. Remember you are what? You are not praising man. Do you understand? The Bible talked to about that king. He said you have been weighed and found what? One thing. Let God see your heart that, look, you are on ground to prison. This base that is standing here, it can't stand on your own. God bless you. It can't what? Do it again. Uh -huh. So you need to be on ground to hear it buzzy. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So please, those six days, give it to God. God said, give me, is it too much? Give me two weeks and see me manifest all through the year. We have seen the word of God here. We have seen God can, God can deny his word. Am I right? Yeah. This is what his word says. Let's do it, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, this year was indeed a great year. Oh. Ah, it was indeed a great year. Oh. And ladies and gentlemen, next year is greater glory. Yeah. So everybody, there is a greater demand for greater glory. Am I right? That's why we are going for two weeks. Amen. So ladies and gentlemen, let's be here. And then... If God lays in your heart to support at any point in time, most especially with the um, uh, musicians coming and all that, God bless you. If that is it, we have the packages for them. But if you want to support, before, with degree of respect, I used to be the one using my faith to pay them. But God said, let the blessings go around. There may be somebody here. Now God is laying in your heart that, oh, when Bukola Beckers come, I'm sponsoring. Ah, when uh, Bola Discovery. I know Bola Discovery fan in the house. <laughs> they know they say. <laughs> so, say, uh, uh, you know one thing God may lay it in your heart it's an opportunity to be blessed I did those things ladies and gentlemen and my life turned I mean there are results that uh, we don't need to speak <laughs> so many things happened in my life this year and I must let you know ladies and gentlemen it's happening for you as well in the name of Jesus so it's going to be awesome and then next week is Christmas service am I right the summer will be very short I promise you that one it will be very what? Very short. Short and precise. So it's going to be short. It's going to be precise. It's going to be accurate. And it's going to reveal Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hold somebody. He says Calagoza. Maragis. Mambrodiga. That's the announcement I wanted. First time as you can go to the back. Now God bless you. Now just hold hold somebody. Say Mamambradi Agazokla Kagazodas. Erima Mamantes, all through this week, Lagzo Zaninta, Lekre Digaroste, speaking in the language of angels, Rako Brali Garosta, stirring up the moves of the Spirit all over your life and your family. In the name of Jesus, up unto Christmas, wherein we have unlimited celebrations. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Come on now. I want to wish you Let's go run and rejoice as we wish ourselves Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. What wealth you gave us is to us Christmas. God bless you. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, brother. I wanna wish you a Merry Christmas. Go around and wish people Merry Christmas. Many of us will see ourselves again on Sunday. Come on now. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080 33 706 938 and 080 2828 one eight three nine or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at dgccintl on youtube search divine glory christian church our twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.